Hello, my name is Brian Tracy, and we're here at the Indianapolis National Speakers Association annual meeting. And I just want to talk about my friend Ubong, who is one of the very best speakers in the world today. And he has a wonderful message that's full of insight and emotion and ideas that you can use to dramatically improve your life and your work. So if you're thinking of using a speaker of any kind, please talk to my friend Ubong and he will take care of you. Call to rise above all of his challenges because there is an anticipation that we are bigger than this, we are better than this, and that with time, we will take our place. Every day, you will face the challenge. Now is that time, the challenge to perform. For in the end, words are words, but your only reality is performance. So never forget, ultimately, you will be judged by how you perform. Yes, by your performance. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of The Challenge to Perform. It was William Smeldley that once said, for as long as there are human rights to be defended, as long as there are great interests to be protected, so long will public speaking have its place. And that's the reason we are beginning right here at the School of Eloquence and also on this program, the challenge to perform, to significantly channel our attention, or should I say direct our attention, towards the art of public speaking, making it the issue, emphasizing it as a critical human skill. Because in the end, yes, I've always said it on this program, you will be judged by how you perform. And guess what? I'm about to add something more. You will be judged by how you present. How well can you speak in public? Do you get frightened when asked to speak in public? Do you find yourself tongue-tied when asked to speak in public? Are you stuck with reading your speech word for word? Do you bore people when speaking in public? If you would love to change all of these and be able to speak like who challenged corporate America? Oh, Barack Obama, you know, it is the only way. Then join me for the next public speaking and presentation skills masterclass, a two-day program that will teach you how to overcome stage fright, prepare great presentations, and speak confidently before any audience large or small at the school of eloquence lagos to register call the numbers on your screen classes hold thursdays and fridays you can also visit schooloneloquence.org well hello everybody hello I can see everyone is so engrossed, and obviously, you are actively discussing, speaking, sharing ideas with one another. And perhaps that's what makes this ongoing discussion of ours on this program all the more important, the art of public speaking, because that's what we're all doing. Mm -hmm. In life, everything we do tends, if you notice, tends to center around communication. If you're able to do it effectively, chances are that you're likely to get very good results. If you are ineffective, chances are that the outcome would be abysmal or poor. Now, I'm also trying to be careful the kind of language I use, because after the last episode, when I talked about excessive verbal ornamentation of conglomeration of aquarium consortium and all of that, I've received quite a number of calls. And the key is to make sure that whatever language you use in communication, it's everyday language that people, your audience, can relate to such that they get your message. It's not so that we say something. Have you ever been to a meeting or to an event and then they ask you, just say something? It is better to have something to say than to say something. I like the way Abraham Lincoln put it. You know how he puts it. He said, it is better to keep quiet and be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubts. <laughs> okay. 
That it, it's just better you keep quiet. Let's just, oh, this guy is a fool. This guy is, has nothing up there. Let's, and you're safer and better just keeping quiet than to now open your mouth <laughs> and finally confirm that yes. <laughs> However, it still does not take away the imperative of communication. We all have to make ourselves available to communicate because it's an inescapable thing. Whether you like it or not, when it comes to public speaking, you can run, but you can't hide. It's never a matter of if. It's a matter of when. Sooner or later, you'll be asked to speak. It could be at a wedding this weekend. For those of you that are going to, to weddings that attend a lot of these functions, it could be at a social function. It could be in church. It could be at your neighborhood's event, a birthday party. There are so many contexts. Of course, at work as well. If you run a business, you need to speak in public. Some of you want to go into politics, come 2015. How many of you? Yeah. How many of you are eyeing <laughs> one government house or another? <laughs> or how many of you are eyeing the house? How many of you want to go to the house? Yeah. House of Reps. How many of you want? <laughs> yeah. Some of you. <laughs> so, so your constituency is calling you. So you can't go there. And they're calling, you're calling yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's another angle. But, yeah. but, but you now see clearly that in every sphere of human endeavor, that need remains consistent, constant. You have to be able to stand on your own and deliver a message in your head, ferry those ideas from your mind across to the hearts and minds of your audience whether they be a large audience or a small one. So the ability to speak in public brings a lot of color to any life. It suddenly transforms you, gives you status. And the essence of this program, week in, week out, is to emphasize these values and gradually begin to show our viewers, and of course those of you here, some of the things that we can learn in other two speak well in public. There's a lady here. We'll come, we'll come to her later. Some of you may have seen her. Uh, I mean, can you see what's going on in here? She, she was at a wedding. I was also at that wedding. And all of a sudden, you can see how dressed she is. The bridesmaid. And when it was time, after the reception, during the reception, she was asked, I won't tell you her name so that some <laughs> ladies don't come after me at the end of this program. I said, all right, now can you say one or two things about the bride? You've been friends for so many years. Tell us about how they met, how she met the groom. Just tell us something. And take a look at her reaction. <laughs> what kind of reaction is this? Help me out. Yeah. Oh, my oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> then, oh, my God. She <laughs> is running for dear Life, trepidation, fright. <laughs> She's under attack. This portrait is perhaps the poster child, or should I say the poster girl, for so many people watching this program right now. The mention of presentation, the mention of self-expression, the mention of public speaking all of a sudden conjures up this mammoth burden that scares us. <sighs> no. <sighs> I'm afraid of the crowd. The crowd scares me. And you know when people use the word crowd, it amazes you. Every time they say, I'm afraid of crowds. And it's, <laughs> it could be as small a classroom as this. But you see, in the mind, and our minds can play games on us. It has been conjured to imply crowd. So stage fright sets in. From stage fright, the knees begin to, to knock, to shake. The hands suddenly develop all kinds of conditions. Hands shaking. And as air-conditioned as this place is right now, 
some people begin to break into what we call a nervous sweat. But my point is, these are all symptoms of something far deeper. The far deeper issues can be addressed for people to get a hold, get a grip. And that's why the question, what do you think is your biggest concern about speaking and making a presentation? What's your biggest concern? I'm going to ask each and every one of you. What's your biggest concern? So prepare your mind. We'll be back to take these answers after this break. How well can you speak in public? Do you get frightened when asked to speak in public? Do you find yourself tongue-tied when asked to speak in public? Are you stuck with reading your speech word for word? Do you bore people when speaking in public? If you would love to change all of these and be able to speak live, who challenged corporate America? Oh, God, for the moral universe. It is the only way. Then join me for the next Public Speaking and Presentation Skills Masterclass, a two-day program that will teach you how to overcome stage fright, prepare great presentations, and speak confidently before any audience, large or small, at the School of Eloquence, Lagos. To register, call the numbers on your screen. Classes hold Thursdays and Fridays you can also visit schooloneloquence.org. All right, welcome back. I have a question for my audience here. Their biggest concern when it comes to speaking in public. In fact, I think I should be also asking them how they <coughs> felt when they were first asked to speak in public. Go down memory lane. I don't know how, what that will be for us. I hope they are fond memories. <laughs> I hope they are fond memories. Who wants to take the first bite at this apple? Let me say that um, the greatest challenge is the message. How you, in terms of how you felt? Yes, the message. Am I communicating the message? Am I engaging my crowd? It's, it's, uh, am I getting their attention? What's the message? What am I giving out to them? So that was for you was the concern, yes. whether they were getting Content, the message. Yes. Or not. And did you find yourself occasionally as you were speaking, asking them, are you getting me? Yes. Are you following me? Yes. Are we together? Yes. Those kinds of remarks. And, and I think we find them very common. Yes. That's in, you know, it's a doubt that is within you. You want a doubt. Yes. We've used that word. You want that feedback. Yes. Okay. Uh, you want to know whether you are passing the message, whether or you're not. getting it or not. Very important point. Uh, and really, at the heart of the issue is the message. Above all else, you are not the issue in public speaking. You, the person speaking, it's never about you. It's about the audience. And if it's about the people you're speaking to, whether large or small, it's definitely about the message. And I'll quickly make the point. When you begin to have harbor those self-doubts, and when you hear people when they speak saying things like, are you getting me, repeatedly, it is wrong. It actually interferes with the message. So if you're at home watching, stop that habit. It's really bad habit. Asking your audience, can you imagine asking a collection of adults, are you following me? Are you getting me? Are we together? Do you understand? It is bad usage. It interferes. You must resolve your internal doubts by preparing and learning what it takes to speak well in public. So we'll leave that. Well, um, I, well, I oh. okay. No, I, I really don't think it, because at times, really, you're talking to the adults that they may decide not to be following you. So you're asking them, isn't it just to find out that, you know, you guys are not, it, it has nothing to do with the person's doubt now, I think. The person is sure of what he or she is saying, but needs to be sure that whoever is on the other end, you know, it's, we are together. That's an interesting perspective you bring in, but it still does not change the fact that it is bad behavior in speaking. It is, because it actually interferes. If you have done a great job at preparing, 
and you've mastered the skill of speaking in public, you know how to carry an audience along. You don't need to be checking back. And by the way, if you say, are you getting me? Chances are that, what's going to happen? Everybody. Chances. Chances, chances, be, chances, because are you guys, so, 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 exactly, so, you see the point, it changes, it changes the dynamic and complicates your, your work as a presenter. So what you need to realize is that prepare, stay focused on the message, stay focused on delivering your message rather than trying to check back with the audience looking as it were for their approval yeah. or for some form of reinforcement. You don't need that. Chances are that you will get your reinforcement in other ways based on, say for example, they are paying attention, paying ra giving you their rapt attention and following your, you will know in terms of, uh, in terms of their body language. So it, it's really bad habit. But for me, the reason why I call it bad behavior in speaking is because it interferes with the message. That's the problem. How well can you speak in public? Do you get frightened when asked to speak in public? Do you find yourself tongue-tied when asked to speak in public? Are you stuck with reading your speech word for word? Do you bore people when speaking in public? If you would love to change all of these and be able to speak like who challenged corporate America? It is the only way. Then join me for the next Public Speaking and Presentation Skills Masterclass, a two-day program that will teach you how to overcome stage fright, prepare great presentations, and speak confidently before any audience, large or small, at the School of Eloquence, Lagos. To register, call the numbers on your screen. Classes hold Thursdays and Fridays you can also visit schooloneloquence.org. You guys are trying to play me okay. around. Uh, you're, you're trying to play me. You're trying to play me around. That's not going to work. What I want to hear right now that our audience can relate to. People watching want to also cast their minds back to the first time and how has it impacted on them the first time they were suddenly called up to say please come up address us what was it like take us back to that time right i, I, I think I'll, I'll i'll say a little bit here i i you know i've, I've been doing some kind of um you know maybe small speaking and writing and all those stuff then i, I remember one day some years back I was called you know sometimes people tend to expose you beyond what you really are or beyond what you really by the introduction. Know, what you are by the introduction or whatever so I got this um it was um around the uh, wishfree palms in, in Lake, um, near Lagos or but I now very big event professionals when I mean professional people that have been senior managers for years and all those stuff and so what was the feeling like what the, what the, the experience the, the experience you know i i got there and i told myself this is a big stage role. and you you know there there was this um how do you start you know what okay the pro problem of the intro, starting the intro thing you know how do you it's catch a very them? important problem how do you catch them because i i over the years, I've learned that. Okay, just hold on a second. Let me put that down. Yes. Take off. I can use the word take off or beginning of your speech. So you had that problem. Yeah. So go. So I, I, you know, the MD of the company, you know, those, the setting was something else. And I, you know, I came up that day. They looked at everybody and said, this is the time to approve something. You know, somehow I just summoned this, you know, all the forces around, you know, came to my rescue and like, and, gave, you started, me and I started. And, and you were able to get it. started very well, 
thought the message was it was applause. And that was your first time. That was my first time. But let me tell you. Let me confess here. I didn't pretend. I'm looking for the Spanish. confessions now. Yeah. I didn't. Okay. I didn't act. If I tell the person that invited me that it was my first time. <laughs> he won't believe me. He won't give you a chance. He won't give me a chance. I needed to act so, that yeah. stage. So in essence, and it worked. I think the point that you make here is that for you, you actually summoned the courage. You just went at it yes. as best as you could. Yes. Summoned the courage, summoned all your, uh, all, 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 mustered all your energy yes. and went at it. Yes. So it's instructive. What works for Mr. A? may not necessarily work for Mr. B. So if you're watching, don't then decide that tomorrow I have been told to come and say something and it's my first time. Decide when you get there, someone just go at it. Please, be advised. Just some of these ideas are designed to give us a sense of what this whole thing is about. The key thing is, in the end, you have to learn the art of public speaking because it's a skill it's something you have to learn if you want to get a very good a very good should i say head start in it okay, okay. who else wants to talk who else wants to tell us i want stories i want tell us tell us were you shaking were you for fidgeting me, for me, for me uh, the take off the take off part was actually there was, thinking was it was a struggle yeah it was a struggle the beginning of your presentation i was thinking i was thinking of what to say like how do i get to how do i get to deliver this and make them see reasons for me or make them um believe. or make yeah believe me make it acceptable so it was it was a struggle for me but at the long run after the first few minutes i got back i, I got covered yeah, after yeah. the first few minutes yeah it just it just came it just kept flowing okay. and the first few minutes and you said you were somehow after the first few minutes able to manage and you survived here's the thing those first few minutes are your most crucial minutes. Wow. And the mistake that we have somehow made of this and carried it into, a, into what I call a stereotype or a mindset or a construct is that we get up to speak, we feel, you know what, let's just get on with it and just somehow start. Along the way, it will pick up and I'll build up. Big mistake. The beginning is the real deal. We've often been told in life, all is well that ends well. In public speaking, all is well that begins well. You've heard the saying, you never get a second chance to make a good first impression. So you must learn to begin well. In fact, you must put your best foot forward. If don't assume that if you mangle the beginning that you somehow make course corrections and build up. Try having a pilot toy with your takeoff. Mm. Think about it in that sense. I'm told by aviation professionals close to me and engineers that pilots are only paid for takeoffs and landings. <laughs> that's all. That's, that, that's what they are paid for. That nobody pays you to fly at cruising altitude. <laughs> Even a three-year-old child can just punch one button and the aircraft will keep going. Okay, can do that. So, it shows, taking from the aviation metaphor, that the beginning of your presentation is the bomb. And hopefully, next week, we'll continue this discussion. How well can you speak in public? Do you get frightened when asked to speak in public? Do you find yourself tongue-tied when asked to speak in public? Are you stuck with reading your speech word for word? Do you bore people when speaking in public? If you would love to change all of these and be able to speak like Who challenged corporate America? Corporate America it is the only way then join me for the next Public Speaking and Presentation Skills Masterclass, a two-day program that will teach you how to overcome stage fright, prepare great presentations, and speak confidently before any audience, large or small, at the School of Eloquence, Lagos. To register, call the numbers 
on your screen. Classes hold Thursdays and Fridays. You can also visit schooloneloquence.org. So, Williams Jennings Bryan was spot on. That for as long as you and I have rights to defend, as long as you and I have interests to work towards, for as long as you and I have stakes around issues, so long will public speaking have its place. See you some other time.